Welcome to SUSECON Digital 22. In our presentation, we'll briefly cover the need for security and a snapshot of the security certifications pursued by SUSE for the various products within the SUSE Linux Enterprise, Rancher, and New Vector product lines. We'll also cover the significance of certifications, the various types of certifications for our products, SUSE's current certification roadmap, and other initiatives underway within the Solutions, Security, and Release Engineering Division. But first, introductions. Katya? Thank you, Blaine. Hello, everyone. My name is Katya Rojas, and I am a project manager on the Solutions Security Certifications team led by Ivan Terni. If you have any questions related to certifications, please contact us on our mailing list, sec-cert at suse.com. Hope you enjoy the presentation. Back to you, Blaine. Thanks, Katya. And I'm Blaine Stone, SUSE's Certification Compliance Program Manager. And through our presentation, you'll get a better idea of our roles and responsibilities. Now let's discuss the significance of certifications. First, the characteristics of a secure system. It goes without saying that in today's world, organizations, be they government or within the private sector, find themselves focusing ever greater resources and funding on security. Within their infrastructure, they focus on confidentiality or the need to protect their data and only allow access to those with proper authorization. The next area is integrity. Organizations not only need to ensure their data is secure, but they also require a level of assurance that it's correct and that it's only modified by those with proper authorization. Finally, we have availability. Ensuring data is secure, providing the necessary assurance that it is accurate, doesn't do much good if it's not accessible or retrievable on demand. While we might be oversimplifying the necessary requirements to secure your organization's systems, these characteristics of confidentiality, integrity, and availability are the foundation of any organization's security plan. Those of us within SUSE's Solution Security and Release Engineering Division work continuously gathering your requirements from the various business sectors such as government, aerospace, telecommunications, edge, and the healthcare industries. We're always striving to ensure that we're compliant and that we have the required certifications. These certifications include common criteria, the U.S. National Information Assurance Partnership, or NIAP, Operating Systems and Virtual Protection Profiles, the National Institute of Standards and Technology Federal Information Processing Standards, or FIPS, the Defense Information Systems Agency, or DISA, Security Technical Implementation Guides, or STICS, the Center for Internet Security Security Guidelines, also better known as CIS Benchmarks, and even other countries certifications such as the Korean Good Software Certification and the Chinese validation of our Chinese language fonts. At SUSE, we currently pursue all of these in order for not only your organization, but also for our own security. All of these demonstrate that SUSE has established risk avoidance and compliance in places through the various certifications. Through common criteria, ELA 4 plus certification and FIPS 140-3 validations, we demonstrate our software supply chain security. We leverage zero trust thinking and maintain SUSE as a trusted software provider for digital government and regulated industries. And we continue to expand certifications beyond the SUSE operating system. Now, I'll take this opportunity to turn it over to Katya so that she can explain in more detail these types of certifications that I have just briefly touched on. Katya. Thank you, Blaine. In this section, we are going to talk about the main type of certifications that we are pursuing and promoting. Common Criteria Certification. Common Criteria is a framework in which computer system users can specify their security functional requirements and security functional assurance requirements using protection profiles. Technology vendors can then implement and or make claims about the security attributes of their products and hire testing laboratories 
to evaluate their products to determine if they meet these claims. Why does common criteria certification exist? Common criteria improves the availability of security enhanced IT products that have been successfully evaluated. Ensures the evaluation of IT products are performed to consistently higher standards and contribute to confidence in those products. Removes the burden of duplicate IT product evaluations and improves the cost effectiveness and efficiency of the validation certification process. The evaluation assurance level describes the rigor and depth of an evaluation. On our product SLES 15 SP2, we pursued the EL4 plus level, methodica, methodically designed, tested, and reviewed, augmented by flow remediation. Common criteria certifies a product and the common criteria evaluation includes its development process, IT environment, physical environment of main location, and processes, procedures, and policies. Common criteria is intentionally flexible, allowing us to select from a range of security functionalities and assurance measures, as long as the requirements are met. One of the complexities of this project is to avoid misusing this flexibility. The process is done by BSI, the Federal Office for Information Security in Germany, and a third-party laboratory. Process which consists of security targets, implementation, testing, and evaluation. We will discuss the awarded certificates and upcoming ongoing certifications rounds in the next slide. The Common Criteria Worldwide Certification Landscape looks something like this. On the left side, you will find the list of member states that can produce certificates. The current list includes 17 countries, including Germany, US, Spain, and France. On the right side, you will find the list of member states that do not produce the certificates, but recognize them, and therefore the certificate will be applicable on those member states. The current list includes 14 countries. NIAP certification. The National Information Assurance Partnership, NIAP, is responsible for US implementation of common criteria, including management of the NIAP common criteria evaluation and validation scheme validation body. NIAP manages a national program for developing protection profile evaluation methodologies and policies that will ensure achievable, repeatable, and testable requirements. The scope of the protection profile is to describe the security functionality of operating systems in, in terms of common criteria and define functional and assurance requirements for such products. The process could be done with BSI or NIAP and a third-party laboratory. The process which consists of security target, implementation, testing, and evaluation. To achieve the PCL entry recognition, the product compliance list recognition listed, a third process must be done with NIAP. EO and NIAP follow different philosophies and cover different market segments. We pursued both in a combination, in a combined project with SLES 15 SP2 to achieve the best coverage for our customers all around the world. We will discuss the awarded certificates and upcoming ongoing certifications rounds in the next slides. This is TIC. The Security Te Technical Information Guides, STIC are security guidelines published, published by the Defense Information Systems Agency, DISA. DISA maintains hundreds, if not thousands, of sticks for the Department of Defense, DOD. They are mandatory for all DOD systems. A stick purpose is to implement security protocols, identify potential weaknesses in your code, and configure hardware 
and software properly. Blaine will go into more details regarding our STIC achievements and ongoing projects in later slides. FIPS. The Federal Information Processing Standards, FIPS, are standards and guidelines for federal computer systems that are developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, in accordance with the Federal Information Security Management Act, FISMA, and approved by the Secretary of Commerce. The Cryptographic Module Validation Program, also known as CMBP, is a joint effort between NIST and the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. The goals of the CMBP program are to promote the use of validated cryptographic modules, provide federal guide agencies with a security metric to use in procuring equipment containing validated cryptographic modules. The goal of FIPS programs are to develop standards and guidelines for federal computer systems and validate cryptographic modules in accordance with requirements outlined in FIPS 140-3. So what do we certify with FIPS? FIPS certifies exact binaries associated to exact sources on a specific hardware. The security policy specifies the binaries, logical boundary, and algorithms that are part of the listed binaries, files. FIPS does not certify the whole operating system. The operating system is, however, part of the described environment of the certified binaries. The number of software components of the cryptographic module, number of binaries, differs between each module. At SUSE, we do not certify all the cryptography of the server, only the modules that are relevant according to our customer and market requests. The process is done by NIST CMVP and a third-party laboratory, process which consists of source, source code review, algorithm and functional testing, and documentation. Due to the new standards of FIPS 143, there have been multiple updates, including changes in the requirements, changes in the process, such as the documentation submission structure and others. We are currently working with FIPS 143 standards, and we will discuss this topic later on. CIS or CIS, the Center for Internet security is a non-profit organization that develops security benchmarks utilizing industry best practices for the secure configuration of a target system. The advantages of CIS benchmarks are available for more than 100 benchmarks across 25 plus vendor product families. They are developed through a unique consensus based process comprised of cybersecurity professionals and subject matter experts around the world. It has a worldwide acceptance. They are the only consensus-based best practice security configuration guide, both developed and accepted by government, business, industry, and academy. Currently, we are renewing our membership with CIS to keep working together. Current Certifications Roadmap We have a prepared a roadmap overview of the most important finalized and ongoing upcoming projects. Starting with common criteria and the latest achievements. We were awarded with EL4 Plus augmented by Flow Remediation Certificate on the third quarter of our fiscal year 2021 for our product SLS 15 SP2. We are currently the only provider of a recent general purpose Linux operating system with a secure software supply chain that is certified common criteria EL4 Plus for IBM Z, ARM, 
and x86-64 platforms. We were awarded with NIA PPOS certificate at the beginning of the first quarter of our fiscal year 2022, and we were included in the NIA product compliance list, PCL entry, at the beginning of the second quarter of our fiscal year 2022, both for our product SLS 15 SP2. We pursued both EL, 4 Plus, and NIA PPOS certificates in a combined project for SLS 15 SP2 to achieve the best coverage for our customers all around the world. On October 2021st, we got listed in the catalog of the National Cryptographic Center of Spain, CCM, as the first Linux operating system product recommended. This catalog includes a list of approved secure IT products for the Spanish government. The Spanish government entities look into this catalog to select their IT products as those are recommended and evaluated by the CCM. With this achievement, we extended the visibility of our common criteria certificates in the Spanish market. Our intention is to promote and extend the visibility of our common criteria certificates among all the countries that recognize them, prioritizing according to market segments. Our next target is the French market with ANSI entity. Passing to the upcoming ongoing projects. We are currently planning to certify two products under, under two protection profiles, SLS 15 SP4 and SLE Micro 5.3, potentially on the virtualization profile, protection profile server, and the general purpose protection profile. We are currently on the readiness assessment phase of the project. Next road is related to FIPS, starting with 140-2 standards. We were awarded with FIPS 140-2 certificates on the selected modules of the products SLE 12 SP4, SLE 12 SP5, and SLE 15 SP2 on the fourth quarter of our fiscal year 2021. New FIPS requirements in the next row will be related to 140-3. We are currently working with the new FIPS 140-3 standards on eight modules of our product SLE 15 SP4. Seven modules that will be evaluated under the CMBP product, uh, process, including OpenSSL, Kernel Default, Kernel RT, LibGcrypt, GNU TLS, and LibNetto, Mozilla NSS, and Libica and one module that won't pass the evaluation process, OpenJDK, which will be adapted to be able to use certified binaries from Mozilla NSS. Our target submission date is December 2022, and our estimated time of arrival of the certificates is December 2023. Note that the CMVP evaluation process takes up to one year after our submission. The next role will be uh, for SUSE Rancher Kubernetes Cryptographic Library. Rancher team is in the planning phase of the project and target ETAs are for the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2023. And with this, we conclude common criteria and FIP certifications rounds. Back to you, Blaine. Thanks, Katya. Continuing where she left off, We've currently completed these STIGs for SLES 12, SLES 15, and for Rancher Manager. We're pursuing STIGs for SLE Micro, SLES for SAP, and SUSE Rancher Kubernetes Engine, or RKE. Upon completion of our certification of the STIGs, we begin work on the Security Content Automation Protocol, or SCAP profiles, for all of our products, thus automating the process of applying the STIG. Currently, we've completed a SCAP for SLES 12, for SLES 15, and a PCI DSS SCAP and a HIPAA SCAP for SLES 15. Currently in progress are SLE Micro, SLES for SAP, 
and an ANSI SCAP for SLES 12 and SLES 15. For our subsidiary, Sousa Rancher Government Solutions, we're also pursuing FedRAMP certification for SLE Micro and for Sousa Rancher Kubernetes Engine, or RKE. Also in progress is the ARM PSA certification level one for SLE Micro and the Korean Good Software certification for SLES 15. Others we have completed this year include the Chinese language font certification and the completion of CIS benchmarks for SLES 12 and for SLES 15. While pursuing all of these validations and certification takes a significant amount of our time, the Solution Security and Release Engineering Division is also pursuing some great initiatives with other organizations. These include the recent acceptance of SUSE as, part, as a participating partner in the National Institute of Science and Technology, or NIST, Automation and Cryptographic Module Validation Program. This will allow us to automate crypto module validation, thus decreasing the time from months or years to hours. This will also provide a significant cost saving to SUSE. This year, SUSE also founded the Open Security Working Group consisting of engineers from SUSE, Red Hat, Canonical, and the Center for Internet Security. All leaders within the open source and Linux community seeking ways to collaborate on security issues that will affect us all. Lastly, SUSE is proud to announce that we have continued our membership with the Linux Foundation, but more importantly, the Linux Foundation Open Source Security Foundation, where we are seeking to participate in multiple security related projects. To wrap it up, we hope this presentation has given you a better understanding for the need for security, how security certification answers the need for risk avoidance for ourselves and for our numerous partners, a little more knowledge concerning the types of various certifications that SUSE currently pursues, and an overview of what we have accomplished and what we are working on, and other initiatives we are involved in to keep SUSE future forward. Thank you so much. And from both Katya and myself, we hope that the rest of your SUSECON Digital 22 is great. Thank you.